Hey there drone fans, Rick here again from Drone Valley. In today's video, I'll cover a brand new feature that Autel just enabled for the Evo 2 and the latest version of their firmware. Now I'm going to call this Time Machine, which I think is an exciting title, because it's almost like you can shift your perspective in time. I think Autel called it pre-record video, which is way more boring, but essentially it's the same thing. In essence, what's happening is the minute you put the drone up in the air, it starts recording and it's creating a buffer of about 40 seconds of whatever the drone happens to see on the ground. The minute you hit the record button, it takes that buffer and dumps it to whatever device you've got connected to your controller. So essentially, it's recording before you hit the record button, which means you can go back in time like 40 seconds. Now you might be thinking, where would I ever use this? Well, how many times have you been flying a drone where you're not recording and something amazing happens? Either a goose goes flying by or something funny happens on the ground and you hit the record button, but it's too late because it's already happened. Well, now you don't have to worry about that because that 40 seconds of buffer is already on your device. And again, I think Autel, with the Evo 2 in particular, has done some pretty incredibly cool things with their technology. Remember, when the Evo 2 came out, they were the first company that really had a camera package that was easily replaceable. So you could pull a couple of screws off, pop the camera off, pop a new one on. Nobody had done that up to this point. And I know you can do it on other drones, but you're violating your warranty and everything else. They made it really easy to do that. They were also the first company that had extended flight times of like 38 minutes on a drone. So this was revolutionary from a mechanical and a technological perspective. But this feature, I don't know how they beat everybody else to the market with this, but I think this is brilliant. And I'll predict that you're going to see it on other drones coming out with new firmware. Now it's a little bit confusing. I've had a couple people ask me about it already because it's not like it takes that 40 second buffer and appends it to the recording that you start by hitting the button. It actually drops that buffer on your device and it drops whatever you're recording on the SD card in the drone. So when you go into the application, you're going to actually see two clips in different places. You're going to see the recording like normal of whatever you record on the drone on the SD card but the other, the buffer portion of it, is going to be on your device. You're going to have to pull those both off and merge them together in post-production through some editing software if you need to. But for me, I just love the fact that it captures that 40 seconds and allows me to really time travel to go back 40 seconds in time. Now, it's really easy to get to, but you got to make sure you turn it on for this feature to be enabled. And the way you do that is from the main menu, from your main menu on your application. On the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see a little arrow. Tap that arrow, that'll bring up all the settings for your video. You want to tap the settings down there as well. Once you do that, it'll bring up the menu for the video settings. You'll want to scroll up and you'll want to turn on pre-record video. Once you turn that on, you're all set to go. The next time you fly, there's going to be a continuous buffer being recorded of everything that's going on with your drone. And when you hit the record button, it's going to freeze that buffer and drop it to your device again, either your phone or your tablet, whatever's connected to your controller. Now, the cool thing is, it's constantly recording, which means it's going to record over itself after a period of time. So it's a, it's a moving window of 40 seconds of whatever happens to be going on. If something happened more than 40 seconds ago, you're not going to get it. But just turn the record button on and you'll be in really good shape. Anyway, I think it's pretty cool. Now, I took it out in the field. This guy out in the field did a little bit of testing with it. So I think we'll have a little bit of fun. But let me show you what it looks like out in the field. Maybe it'll make a little bit more sense. And then I'll come back at the end with a few more final comments. So stay tuned for the field test. Right now I've got the drone set up above me and it's buffering the video that it actually sees. So it's recording about 30 to 40 seconds of video. Even though it hasn't put it any place yet, it's constantly recording in the background. And the minute I hit the record button, it'll freeze that 30 seconds and drop it to my phone. So it's sort of like a time machine to move me back 30 seconds. Now to prove that to you, I'm gonna do a little dancing here in the field. Now I know this isn't what most people would call dancing, but it's the way I dance. So anyway, I know it looks like I'm throwing a fit but I haven't hit recording yet. Now let me hit record. It just started recording. Now the video on the drone that's gonna be recorded to the micro SD card is actually being recorded right now. So let me wave my hat around and show you that it's actually recording that video on the drone. And what's also happened is that 30 second window of recording that it did before I hit the record button has already been sent to my phone. So it's recorded on the device you've got connected to your controller. And later, I'll have two separate clips. I'll have the buffer clip that's on my phone, and I'll have this clip, which I'm recording from above, and I can merge those two together if I need to in my post-editing uh, software. So anyway, let's get back to the shop and see how those two look. 
Okay, you can see from that field test that there were actually two clips created. One was the buffer, which was dropped to my phone. The other one was the actual clip that I recorded that was dropped to the SD card. Now, what was a little bit sketchy there was that, unfortunately, the buffer is recorded at 29 frames per second, and I was recording at 60 frames a second. So when you look at the synchronization there, it's a little bit off when you look at those two clips, but that was because of the different frame rates. Anyway, for me, having that clip, that 40 seconds is almost like a gift because I didn't record that. The drone decided it might be something important that I'd want to look at and it recorded it for me. And again, where that's going to come in handy is if I'm flying and something amazing happens around me and I don't happen to be recording at that point, I've now got 40 seconds of that amazing content. And I can imagine that if you're using the drone for surveillance, let's say you're a, a police force and you're watching an entrance to a building and you can't record the whole time you're up there, but you're waiting for some scary guy to come walking out of that building. Well, you have the drone hovering over the door up there 200 feet and all of a sudden somebody walks out. Well, by the time you hit the button, it's too late. He's already gotten his car and he's made his getaway. So having that 40 second recording means that I'm gonna capture somebody walking out of the door, I can hit the record button and capture everything else that he does. So a lot of applications for this, but to me, again, if you're thinking about drones, and I think a lot about drones, it's really hard to come up with innovative, creative features for drones. I mean, all of the cool stuff has been done at this point, right? We've got amazing cameras, we've got incredible artificial intelligence and crash avoidance and following technologies. So for the team over at Autel to sit down and think to themselves, what could we do through a firmware update to enhance the drone even further? Hey, let's put this time machine feature in there. By the way, I'm going to trademark that, but let's put that time machine feature in there. That's something nobody else is doing at this point. I have to commend them for that because that's a team of brilliant engineers that are looking at what we're doing with our drones and constantly thinking about how they can enhance that experience for us. So good on you guys over at Autel. I can't wait to see what you've got next. Anyway, that's pretty much it for today. I've got some links below if you want to get the material for exactly what firmware updates you need. Because again, there are two versions of the Evo 2. There's the Gen 1 and the Gen 2. You got to make sure you download the right firmware for it. Once you apply that firmware, the feature's enabled. You go inside, turn it on, you're in really good shape. And that's pretty much it for today. So I hope you found this clip helpful. I love talking about drones and technology in general and when i find something like this that i think is really cool i can't wait to talk about it on the channel so hopefully you've enjoyed the clip if you have any questions of anything i've covered today drop those in the comments below i'll get back to you as quickly as i can i promise you i have so many more clips we're working on that relate to drones and other high-tech gear like portable power stations and a bunch of other high-tech stuff so if you haven't subscribed to the drone valley channel yet what are you waiting for hit that button down there and join the drone valley family we'd love to have you stop back and catch all the content Content that we happen to be posting. So until next time, thanks again for watching and happy flying.